Welcome back to Livy's Lovelies, your inspirational craft channel, and I'm your host, Fam the Fabulous. For more ideas, inspiration, swaps, and challenges, click the link in the description below to join our craft community, The Maker Exchange, on Facebook. Okay, so now while we're waiting for the letters to dry, I think I'm going to go ahead and attempt to use a stencil. I'm, I'm praying that it works out okay. Um, <clears throat> on the letters is going down here. There'll be a bow here. Maybe here. And down here. Yeah, we'll do a little bit here. I don't want to go off the edge though. So I'm going to place it just so. So that I don't have stuff gooping off the side, you know. <clears throat> so let me get a palette knife. Okay, so this is awfully thin or thick towards the edges. So remember to cover your stuff up real well. All right, so I gotta hold this in place good. And then I'm just going to, I'm not gonna do a lot of the area, just enough to create, um, <clears throat> just enough to create some variation.
Okay, so we're gonna let this dry. And uh, I just spread that excess around because I'll probably use this back background as some type of background for like a ta tags or something like that in the future. Waste not, want not. All right, so we'll let this dry and then we'll move on to adding color to this. We'll figure that out, but stay tuned. So now that this is relatively dry, as far as I can tell, I think what I want to do is use orange and red on this. Let me grab a paper towel to blot up the excess. And so I'm going to try and color this kind of, you know, give it an orange and maybe even yeah, I'm not sure because this is, this is brown. Yellow might not work. We'll see. But I want to use a variety of colors, not variety, just to, some fall colors to color the um, texture paste, modeling paste, whatever. And then um, and then eventually I will use the hot glue gun to put these on because these might end up having to go on top of that. So we'll see. All right, so let me move these out the way so they don't get wet. <clears throat> so let's start off with, I'm going to use this brush. Let's go with an orange orange. So I'm going to use this one. This is just a palette that I picked up from, I think, from Burlington Coat Factory. I think it was a while ago. So we're going to use the, we'll use this orange. And these are metallic watercolors. So let's just see how this works.
Okay, now let's move on to the redder tone, which I'll be using this one right here. Let's see how that, hopefully it won't be too pinkish red. You know what I mean? And I got to be sure this time to bring more of the pigment into the color so that I don't have to do two coats. But something tells me that I'm about to get a pink, a pink red. Let me just, eh, that's good enough for fall, I'm, I'm going to say. I wish it was a little bit more deeper, a little deeper. But this will work. Okay, so I am done painting the um, the orange and what I want it to be was red. But as you can see, it did not necessarily come paint down as red. So what I'm going to propose to do, and of course, as you know, it's going to be a trial and error type of thing. I am going to, let me see if it'll spray out. It won't, obviously. I'm going to use some of this Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist to darken and this is what color is this burn red um i can't even can't even get this to spray out because i haven't i don't use it like that i really don't want to pour it but i don't think i'll need that much
All right, so what we ended up here with here is, like I said, that ombre effect where it's, well, that's, I use some of this Glimmer Mist, this uh, ruby, rusty red, uh, and then for, on the pink part, I use the barn, barn red. Or did I say that opposite? Yeah, I think I used the rusty red, watered it down just a little bit to go around the edges of the orange to darken that just a bit so we can get a good ombre effect there. And then we got, so that looks nice the way that that is. I like that. The next thing I'll do is hot glue on the letters and add a bow. And I may have to redrill the hole at this point because I can see it. But, yeah, it's still there. I might be able to do it with my bead reamer. So, all right, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to go around the edges of the letters with the black soot so that um, it can have a little bit of dimension. I'm going to probably use the other edge for that if I can. Yeah, that, that'll work. That'll be better, yeah. Definitely. Okay. I was going to start hot gluing them down while the hot glue gun is warming up. I'm just going to go ahead and go around the edges to darken just a little bit. Give them a little bit of darkness. And that'll make them, hopefully make them pop up. Here, is, here's the A. Ooh, thought I lost a the letter there. Okay, there is a fly in here. My hubby was barbecuing for my birthday, and I may have to pause this so I can get it because I can't stand them. I may have to let them out the front door. I try to let them out the front door so I don't have so I can avoid killing one of God's creatures. But I don't want to live with them. I don't want them in my house longer than I can. I know about them. Oh, okay. There, there we go. I got it. I hope I'll pause. The ridiculousness of it all. I let them out the front door, but nevertheless, that that's too much. I can't stand. I, and then you got to hear it. Oh. I cannot be the only one that feels that way about a fly. And and if I can hear it, that means it's big. You know what I mean? You got to go. So when my husband um, barbecues back uh, in the backyard, it's near the deck. So when, as he exits, uh, you know, as he exits the deck, the, um, the smoke from off the grill circulates by our back door. And it draws, for whatever reason, it seems like it draws the flies to the backyard or to the back door. And so anytime you open up that door, if you're not careful, you are escorting them, essentially escorting them into the home. And I can't deal with it. I cannot. I will not rest until whatever one that I know that was in here is gone. Now, these little makeup brushes or sponges work well. I don't use them in real life for makeup. But <laughs> they work wonders in crafting, I can tell you that. Okay. I don't I don't wear um, foundation, and when I do, it doesn't require an applicator. If it does, I, I don't use them. Okay, I think we got them on. Now let me flip this around and get the corners that I couldn't get before. There we go. I'm fairly certain that this is not why this was shaped in this fashion when they made it at the factory. But we sure are glad that they did. Okay, I think that glue gun is about ready. Now the trick is going to be getting them lined up properly. Let me see if I can get some of this off of here. Yep, that did it. And when I'm done with this, I think I'm going to take an acrylic spray and spray the entire thing to seal it. Just so that um, if I decide to put it in the kitchen or wherever I decide to put it at, it's, um, the moisture won't impact it. Oh, that was a little too much. Okay. 
got the last one. And we're almost there. I don't have a bow, but I'm going to figure something out for that. So, I'm sure I have some fabric around here that I can create something with. But in the meantime, between time, we're going to work with what we got. Oh, that gives a nice... I may go back around the rest of this with the black. We'll see. You know, the constantly messing around with it. But it's art! That's what you do. Oh, crafts, whatever. Same difference. Okay, so... I'm using this, um, this is by Thickers, and this is good for scrapbooking, but it comes with these so that you can line your letters up, which is great because I needed it. So I really don't need, um, help lining them up. I need help keeping them straight, and thankfully, this is actually on the back of paper that's lined so I can easily line the ruler up as long as this is straight and it is almost here we go so you make sure all the letters are where they need to be because you know how the hot glue is you got literally seconds before um, you you don't have any wiggle room well you don't have any wiggle room anyways but um, something needs to be pushed over. Here we go. I, I know my hands is dry. I know somebody out there in uh, craft land is saying, Oh my gosh, can she do her nails? And you'd be right, but the answer is no. Okay. All right, pumpkin. Because the moment I put my hands in water, off comes the nail polish. And I do too much crafting and rough stuff that it makes absolutely no sense this is off there we go it makes no sense to um, have like acrylic nails on I spent years with acrylic nails I'm a little older now so um, you know maybe when the kids older and you know now that I'm a real estate agent a realtor I should say maybe I could you know up the game up my game and get a little fancy Huh, we'll see. All right, I'm not going to put a whole lot of glue on here because I don't think that's necessary. But just enough to hold. If my cord is short, of course, that would be an issue. Um, oh, gracious. I forgot about the strange jaw. All right, we got a couple seconds to make it work. Not totally straight, but straight enough. Isn't that pretty? <gasps> she did it. She did it. Now let's see if I can find some type of a ribbon. Actually, let me ream that hole. Let's see if I can ream that hole without completely destroying it, you know? Oh, it was still soft. Thank you, Lord. For taking care of your girl. Now, I just need it wide enough for the twine to go back through. I think that's what it was. That was in there. Okay, so let's do that. What did I do with the twine? I think it was tied. At, yeah, it was. They only put one through at a time. You might be able to get it. If we don't destroy it in the process, we. You hear me say we? So I heard one of y'all say, I'm not doing this. <laughs> this is all on you, fam. Good old fam the fabulous. It's all on you, girl. Fine. I'll take the I'll take the criticism, should there come. I pulled one of the strands off, so. Alright. 
and tie a little knot up top. Give us something to put a ribbon from. And cut that back off. That's not cute. It's not cute. All right. Okay, so while I was scourging, what do you call it? Scrounging. Scourging? Scouring? Scouring. Scouring. The, the lovely lab for another word to go on. Just, just to finish up on this, I ran across um, this wood uh, script, not script, handwritten, you know, style, in, uh, wooden embellishment by Jim Hadfield. It came, it came in this pack. I had bought it. I'm not sure how long ago. Maybe uh, last summer. It's the homemade wood veneers. So I went on ahead and painted it in the same um, metallic. And I'm just going to go forth, finish this up with going around with some distress ink. And I will glue that down as well. But I think what I want to do, and I'm not going to do too much of this because this might still be damp. So I hit it with the, um, the heat gun. I think what I'm going to do is layer underneath it just so that the word can pop out a little bit. I'm going to have to use this side to get in those edges. That's better. Okay. And so I've been playing around with um, this scrap uh, ribbon. It's not, it's uh, netting, not netting. What do you call it? Mesh, whatever. It came on a gift basket that I received from one of hubby's clients. I think at Christmas time last year. Um, and I always say her package, the packaging that she sends the gifts in is always, re, it's always good to, um, you can always upcycle it and use it for something else. Because like last year she sent something in a, like a store, uh, Tupperware, not Tupperware, but like a sterile, not a sterilite, but you know, uh, a container that you can use um, for storage in the home, you know what I mean? Store, uh, laundry supplies and stuff like that. And so as a matter of fact, that's where it's at right now. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do is let me move this stuff out of the way so that I can get a good visual for myself. I think what I want to do, I'm going to do, leave this like that, but I think I might want to, yeah, there we go. That's kind of how I envisioned it. A little something up top and a little something at the bottom. Let me find my scissors. Oh, here we go. And I've got plenty of this stuff. All right. And I'm going to glue that to all the rest of this stuff down. do this like this and like that oh there we go that's what I was, I was looking for something kind of like that I need to make this a little bit thinner though all right and I think we might have the look we were going for so bear with me folks while I grab that hot glue slide that over this way mind you I haven't done any any, anything like this before. So, this is a trial and error type of thing. Oh, that's nice and festive. That looks cute and festive. Talk about the longest tutorial of your life. This is definitely not a tutorial. This is a come craft with me and watch me make a mess. <laughs> Let's see what, what kind of foolishness we can get into. That's what this was. All right. I'm 
might put a little bit more of the this here like so just to kind of I'm gonna leave that like that for a second and then we'll go ahead and put this down here Yeah, that was a perfect fit. Right on time. Gather home. Where all the love is. One more time. Still got friends, right? Alright, fam, let's get this right. Look, my friends, she's finally done. And this is absolutely something I would consider a mixed media Dollar Tree challenge, okay? Fall challenge. Because we have different mediums. We have different colors, different texture. We, we got it all in here. And it, it actually all came together. So um, let me just walk you through the process really briefly. Gessoed the wooden um plaque okay tore up vintage book pages layered those on top of here on top of that is two coats of tim holtz distress collage medium in vintage okay then i took stencil and um laid the acrylic uh no it's um texture paste okay Texture paste down. On top of that is what metallic watercolor and a little bit of Angel Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. Okay. Then the letters, I did not gesso them. I simply used the oh gosh, metallic luster by Deco Art painted that on both of these used the tim holtz black soot distress around the edges just to give them some dimension and then the last thing that i did I, and i hot glued them down the last thing that i did was i added um some leaves that i purchased from the dollar tree a couple of years ago along with some upcycled netting or mesh whatever you want to call it on top of here just to give it, you know, a little bit more interest and make it festive. And I think it came out relatively beautiful, don't you think? Let me let me bring that up close so that y'all can see all of that beauty that we got together here. And so this is actually my first time doing something of this. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not that complicated, but it was a lot of steps and quite a few different products. But if, if I'm being perfectly honest... Aside from this little piece that I purchased from um, Tuesday morning, everything in here, you could do this exact same thing with products from the Dollar Tree. You would also need the um, texture paste, but you actually can make some. You can make that. There's recipes on, on YouTube for that. But the letters, you can get those from Dollar Tree. The leaves came from Dollar Tree. This big leaf came from Dollar Tree. Um, they have different color paint, so you could use a different color acrylic paint to paint your letters. And um, you could coffee stain your your, pa your paper. Grab a book from the Dollar Tree and just coffee, coffee dye a bunch of pages. And you got yourself pretty much, you know, you can do the same thing. So um, the only thing that I actually went to Dollar Tree to purchase for this project is this leaf. Everything else has, was inside of my home. Or should I say inside of the lovely lamps stash okay so anyways if you're still watching i thank you for staying tuned and um there is another dollar tree challenge and a giveaway up in the corner uh, i think that one ends within the next day or so so you want to check that out and if you're new to the channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because if you're still here you like what's on this channel don't don't kid yourself hit the subscribe button along with that notification bell so you don't miss anything like this and i do plan to do especially when as the cold weather's cold weather um, approaches a little bit more home decor especially using the dollar tree because it's something that we all have access to for the majority of us and those who don't have access to the dollar tree 
they carry a lot of things that are at Walmart and uh, majority of the discount stores. So with that being said, guys, until you, we're back here together on YouTube. And oh, wait, let me stop that for a second. And for my current subscribers, those who have been coming along for the journey for months and years, thanks so much for sticking sticking with the channel and for supporting me, um, commenting, liking, sharing your feedback. It makes it all worthwhile. And some of those tips I fully utilize. So anyways, until we're back here together on YouTube, guys, stay encouraged, stay blessed, stay creative and crafty. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe to join the crafty community and be sure to click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Thank you so much for watching. Now stay tuned for more from Libby's Lovelies, your inspirational craft channel. Bye for now.